So what TSA CARES does is they will, if you call them 72 hours in advance, you'll have to give them your flight info and some information about what you might need help with. Mm -hmm. And then they will meet you somewhere in the airport. They usually send an email and say, we'll meet you at this time at this spot in the airport. So they're ready to go when you get there. When you get there, you just show up to whatever spot they said, you'll meet up with the agent, and then they take you directly to the front of the security line. So you don't have to wait in the long line. So you have to call tomorrow, Kim? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm still waiting on Cleveland to send us the flight details. Okay. I think um, from this morning, it was 125 was the flight. No, yeah. But once you have the flight number, go ahead and give TSA CARES a call. Okay. Um, they will help, so they'll take you straight to the front of the line, which is nice because it helps with time a lot. And then they will literally walk you through every step of the process and tell you exactly what to expect and what's going to happen and help you with whatever parts you might need help with. So when you do that, they've always let me go through with whoever I'm traveling with. And so they typically let whoever is traveling with you go straight through to you. Mm -hmm. They'll take you to the front and then you go through the security process. As far as security goes, um, you'll still need to put all your bags on the belt and have them go through the scanner like usual. Um, you don't need to remove your shoes like you used to. Um, and then you also get extra luggage. So compared to how certain airlines have a limit to how many carry-ons you can have, if you pack your medical equipment separate from other things, then you can have those for free. They don't count against you for your number of bags. So just clearly, like if you're going to bring your catheters and stuff like that, just make sure that it's all together in one bag. And if someone asks you, you can just say it's medical equipment. Mm -hmm. If they need to look in it, you can show them that it's all medical equipment. But that flies free and doesn't count against your number of bags. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure meds and all of that is labeled so that they can see or any liquids that you might need like lube and stuff like that just make sure it's labeled um, you'll put your bags on and then they'll escort you through to the other side of security and that's where they'll do a special security process typically um, they'll ask you things like can you stand up and walk through the scanner can you lean forward um, they'll ask questions like that you just be honest about what you can do and then they'll adjust the security screening based on that so what I've seen them do is they'll um, do like chemical tests of your wheelchair, looking for harmful chemicals, they'll swab test your hands, they might do a pat down of the wheelchair and of kind of your back, um, they might have you lean forward and make sure there's nothing behind you, that kind of thing. Wow. But they're very clear about the process and in my experience at DIA they've been awesome, so okay. it's pretty easy. Okay. That is where TSA CARES ends, so they only help with that security process. But if you are needing help with like luggage or something like that, or if, if you're not feeling up to pushing through the whole airport, then there's a service called Prospect. Prospect is the name of the company that works for Southwest Airlines or with Southwest Airlines. There's other companies that work with other airlines. So when you book tickets, if you go with another airline, you just have to ask what their accessibility is and what company they use and how to mm -hmm. make reservations there. Mm -hmm. But for Southwest, it's a company called Prospect. Um, I honestly can't recall if you need to make an, or if you can make appointments ahead of time with them. But what I've done in the past is just rolled up. They have a, um, kiosk right outside the check-in desk and it says kind of accessibility it mm -hmm. might have like the wheelchair sign on it or if you're at the southwest desk just ask where prospect is and if you could get an agent and if you go up to the kiosk they typically will call somebody to escort you through okay. they are helpful for managing luggage mostly mm -hmm. so if you need help carrying your luggage through the airport that's a good use of them or if you need help and would like somebody to push your wheelchair through the airport then that's a good use of them otherwise a lot of people find that they may or may not be super helpful it just kind of depends so it's up to you if you guys use that if you feel like you're managing the luggage okay then you probably don't need them and TSA cares would be the better way to go you can't have both. Okay. Okay. 
So TSA Cares will just end at security. Prospect can help you all the way to the gate. So they would help you get your luggage all the way to the gate. When you get to your gate, um, you want to check in with the gate agent and make sure one last time that they have an aisle chair for you. Again, that's kind of the most mm. crucial piece is once you get there, say, hey, I need to pre-board and I need an aisle chair. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they have it ready for you. Okay. So that's the first thing to do when you get to your gate. After that, you can go, and I'd recommend go calf, and then kind of get everything ready for, ready to go. But calfing being the most critical thing to do before you get on the plane. Okay. Um, once, so you'll pre-board, so you'll board before the, the boarding time. So you need to make sure that you're early enough to be there ready for that and that you can calf and come back and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll be the first one on the plane and the last one off the plane. When they call for pre-boarding, you'll roll up and then you'll go down the jetway and that's where they should have the aisle chair ready for you, just right outside of the plane. At that point, um, Prospect is the same company. Those are the folks that can help you with the transfer too. Okay. So at that point, you can decide what you want to do. If you want to use a slide board, you can tell Prospect, you can tell the folks what to do or what not to do. Just do be really clear. Those things or do I have to bring my own? You'll have to bring your own. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I would bring a slide board with you and one thing is make sure that you like attach it to your luggage or something because they frequently get left in the overhead bin because they're flat and they just, you know, if luggage goes on top of it, then it just gets missed. So instead of me doing the transfer, they're going to do the transfer? They could. It's oh, they up could. to you. Okay, got It's it. up to you guys. And you just have to be really clear about what you do want help with or what you don't want help with. Got it. And it's really 100% up to you, Kim. So mm -hmm. you and... Uh, Maggie looked at what it would be like to have a two-person lift. Mm -hmm. If you're doing that, I would let them do it. You don't need to do that because there's no reason to risk hurting your back and it's what they do for a living and it's what they're there for. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't want to do that, which is totally fine, then it might be better for you to spot the transfer because you know her better. Right. And oh. you're going to understand what the transfer should look like. Right. If you guys decide to use the slide board, then you could have the folks from Prospect, you could have them stabilize the aisle chair so that it doesn't move. That's a good use of them in that moment. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, or you can have them stand kind of behind in case you were to lose your balance, but you just want to be clear about what you need help with and what you don't need help with. And if you don't want them touching you, just be clear. Don't touch me. My brother's going to help me with this transfer. Just hold the chair. Okay. Okay. Um, they're usually more used to helping like elderly folks get mm -hmm. on and off the plane and mm -hmm. so they won't n a lot of them haven't seen a sideboard transfer or know what mm -hmm. to expect with that okay. mm -hmm. and just like with everything here at Craig your transfer is different from someone else's transfer mm -hmm. and so you guys knowing each other best is kind of the best way to go they just won't know what to do yeah. um, which is fine if you're doing the lift transfer you just want to make sure that you're, you know, depressing your shoulder blades so that they can't pull up on your shoulders. Okay. But other than that, that would be a good use of their strength. So you would do the transfer however you want, whether you're doing a two-person lift or you're doing a sideboard transfer. And then once you're on the aisle chair, um, then you need to take apart the manual chair and take all the removable parts and pieces on the plane with you. Okay. Mm. The reason for that is that the manual chair is going to go underneath the plane in the cargo hold and so anything that's easily removable without tools has a potential of getting lost in that process and so the just to the backpack yep mm. side guards, side guards. Mm. and eye tippers mm. and that's about it oh good we don't need to dismantle the whole thing nope no. okay. just the things that could easily get lost really nice. um Ideally, you want to take pictures of your chair there, too, so that you have evidence of what it looked like when they took it. Mm -hmm. A lot of what we talk about with airline travel is preparing for the worst, but knowing that most of the time things are going to go smoothly. Mm -hmm. You just want to be ready in case something doesn't go right. Mm -hmm. So you'll, uh, you'll be on the aisle chair. I typically recommend you just bring some kind of a duffel bag that can fit the backrest and the side guards and the anti-tippers all in it. Oh, the backrest. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if yours comes off easily. It yeah. Should. Yeah. I would take it off. And then um, the cushion you just take off and put in the overhead bin. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you flip it upside down so that the gel part isn't facing up. Okay. Reason for that is you don't want someone to put something sharp on top of it that could puncture it. Yeah. Okay. So the gel part is face down. Face down. Right. Yep. Right. All right. So once that's done, they're gonna take the manual chair and put it underneath the plane. Um, and then you'll head on to the plane in the aisle chair. Once you're there, you'll transfer over. You guys did that transfer upstairs. We can't go back upstairs, so we won't be able to practice it this week. If you end up wanting a seat that's farther back and the armrest doesn't come up, or does come up, then it's just a little scoot over. If you want the front seat, oftentimes those armrests won't come up. Mm -hmm. But there's also more space so you can angle the chair in there and then use your slide board again. Mm -hmm. Or you can have them do a dependent lift up and over. You could do that or you could have them get underneath your arms and lift up and over just the same way that you would get from the aisle chair back to your manual chair. Okay. Um, in that moment, uh, you know, they're they're on their normal day schedule, and so you might have to say, I need a minute to figure out how you want to transfer, and that's okay to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might feel pressured, but you can say, stop, I just need a minute to decide what, what's the best. Yeah. Okay? There's no harm in doing that. And airline is kind of the place where you really have to advocate for yourself just because it's such a hustle and bustle. Mm -hmm. But you've got rights to take the time that you need. So make sure that you advocate for that if you need it. Um, a small side note is that some Southwest airplanes are oriented such that you don't need to transfer to the aisle chair. And oh. that you can roll straight on with your manual chair and transfer straight to the seat with your manual chair. So when you get down to the jetway, if you just kind of look in the plane and see if it looks like there's a straight shot that your manual chair might fit, then you could ask if you can try that. Okay. Okay. That just saves you two transfers, makes yeah. things a lot easier, but it's not always a given. It just, some Southwest planes are like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so once you transfer over to the airline seat, you'll, um, be ready to go and and good to take off. The things you wanna keep in mind are that you still need to do weight shifts because you're on a surface that's new and that's not super cushiony, not as nice as your wheelchair cushion. Mm -hmm. So you can do weight shifts, you can do lift weight shifts, you can do side to side weight shifts, or you can do forward, whatever you're most comfortable with and wanna do. I'll just follow my regular timer with every 20 yep, minutes. Yep, that would be perfect, yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we often have people take the stall bar strap, the strap that you use for stretching your legs, mm -hmm. and put it around your chest and around the seat behind you in front of their lap tray to give you extra trunk support. Because during takeoff and landing, just like everybody else, you have to have that seat fully upright. Mm -hmm. And so you might feel a little unbalanced. Sometimes airlines don't like that. There's something about it that goes against their FAA regulations. And so sometimes they might ask you to take it off. And if they do, you just have to take it off. Um, in that case, you can have, you know, somebody kind of support you for takeoff and landing, yeah. or you can scoot your hips a little farther out so that you're more slouched for takeoff and landing. Okay. Um, but then once you're up, scoot those hips back so that your skin's protected, and then you can lean the seat back. Okay. Um, take three days worth of catheters, bowel program supplies, and medications with you on the plane. That way, if your luggage were to get lost, you have three days worth to get in contact with New Motion or whoever's providing your supplies and get what you need. Make sure that you always do that. And then I typically recommend you bring like a empty soda bottle or something like that so that if you guys were to get rerouted for some reason and not be able to land like you expect, mm -hmm. that you c could cath from your chair. 
they don't bring the aisle chair on the plane with you. So mm -hmm. once you're in that seat and the plane takes off, you're in that seat um, until you land. Okay. okay, now the trip to Vegas is extremely short, so it's not likely that you would need to cap while you're on the plane, but just as a good habit to prepare for that in case you were to get rerouted or something unexpected were to happen. Yeah. Um, and then if you were flying alone, the flight attendants are usually fine with helping kind of discard of stuff if you needed it. Um, all right, any questions so far? I know that's a lot of info. Um, well, I kind of went over this with Nadia. Yeah. Kinda, but it's nice to have a refresher. Yeah. Um, so I don't need to bring another cushion. Okay. If you have one, it's great to use it. Um, since it's such a short flight, yeah, I don't think it's essential. Early. Yeah. Okay. It's not necessarily essential. Yeah, but I'm if, just worried about my skin. Yep. Know. Yep. So just be really diligent about doing good weight shifts. Weight shift. And then when you get home, it's not a bad idea to do a skin check and make sure that everything looks okay. And if anything does look a little red, then maybe, you know, get out of the chair for a little bit. But with that length of a flight, I wouldn't anticipate, and kind of given your history of not really having a ton of skin issues, I wouldn't anticipate it being a big issue. And a lot of people travel without a travel cushion. Mm -hmm. So if you get back to traveling frequently and are doing a lot of flights, then it's a good thing to have. And especially if you're going for longer flights. Yeah. Um, but but for this, it's a direct flight. Yeah, for Two this hours. one, I don't think it should be an issue. If you're really concerned, you can take the top part of this cushion off, that like soft part with the gel in it. Oh, you can take it apart. You can take it apart, okay. yep. And you could sit on that part if you wanted to. Oh, I'll check it out later. Yeah. Let's see if that's an option. Yeah. Mm. The wheelchair, I'm gonna have like a luggage tag on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just like anything that they gate check, they put some kind of a luggage tag on with your contact info and all of that. And okay. so they'll ask you to do that. You can do it ahead of time when you're at the um, like Southwest when you're checking in. Yeah. It's a good time to do that. Yeah. If not, they'll ask you to do it when you get to the gate. Okay. okay so everything's tagged, all the medical stuff, the Hoyer list. Mm -hmm. All that. So. Yeah. My suggestion to her was to wear a diaper. I don't know if she's going to do it. Yeah. Because she might get stressed to the turbulence because yeah. it's first time. I don't know if her body's going to react. So yeah. what's your thought on that? That's up thoughts? to you, too. So It's an option. It's an option. I, if you're anxious about it or nervous about it, then it definitely makes cleanup easier. Regardless, you still wouldn't want to be sitting in that for very long. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily change whether you clean up, but it does often give people peace of mind to know that it's not going to go everywhere. So if you're concerned mm -hmm. about involves, then it's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Again, skin is the big thing, so you just need to make sure you're doing weight shifts, make sure you're not sitting in anything that's wet. So mm -hmm. if you did have an involve, don't sit there for, you know, 45 minutes. Um, and then if, when you get there, make sure you check your skin. Make sure there wasn't anything kind of kinked up underneath you or something like that. But it's absolutely an option for you. All right. Um, so then, when you're getting ready to land, they'll usually announce that they're starting the descent. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when you will want to flag the uh, flight attendant down and remind them that you'll need your manual chair up before you can get off the plane, and that it needs to be unharmed and and with all the parts and pieces. So you will. Um, I'll be the last one to leave. You will, yep. So when you're flying with somebody, I would recommend having them hop off the plane and take a look at your manual chair before you uh, transfer. That way, if like a caster is broken or something's not working or you, you know the backrest won't go on because something's bent, then you know before you get onto the aisle chair. This is again one of those prepare for the worst, but usually it's not going to be an issue kind of things. Mm -hmm. Because if you transfer to the aisle chair, then they can take you off the plane and then you're stuck in the aisle chair, which is not very comfortable. It's not very good for your skin. Mm -hmm. 
if you stay on the airline seat, they have a little bit more um, motivation to fix whatever the problem is. So it's not a bad thing. Now, if something's really broken and it's going to take time to get it fixed, then you're eventually going to have to transfer, but you want them to get moving on how it's going to get fixed before you transfer. Sometimes what it is is it's just taking a minute for them to get the manual chair up. You know, it's just a little slower to come up. And so you staying on the on the plane will give them some incentive to make sure that they hurry and get it ready for you. And that way you're not stuck in a not great situation after you get off the plane. Um, so then you'll transfer to the aisle chair come off the plane, put the put your wheelchair back together with all of the side guard and cushion and backrest and inner tippers, and then transfer to your manual chair and be on your way. If you have any concerns about damage, say like a brake extension got damaged, it's not essential to you leaving the airport, but you still want the airline to pay for that repair. So take pictures of it when it happens so that they're marked on your phone with the time that you took the picture. And then go down to baggage claim right after and file a claim for the, the damage that they did. And do it before you leave the airport. If you leave the airport and then try and do it later, then it's a lot harder to get those things paid for. Really cool. What usually gets damaged? You know, I think most frequently it's small things that aren't huge, right? So like this, if you imagine them trying to shove your chair into the cargo hold with some other luggage, then maybe this little plastic piece gets broken. Not a big deal. Okay. But you still want to get it fixed and you want to make sure that you have what you need. Um, we recommend you take all the removable parts and pieces because more often than not those are the things that might get lost mm -hmm. in the process like if a side guard fell off and it's not likely you're gonna find that so we try and kind of do the best we can to educate you on preparing for that so that there's minimal possible damage the um, you know, the frame of your wheelchair and the axle of your wheelchair, they're, they're very sturdy and hardy. They're meant to take quite a bit of force, and so it would take them doing something pretty not great for them to break that. Yeah. And I would doubt that that happens as much, but it's good to keep an eye on everything. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think that is all of the information. I know it's a lot of information, but since you've gone over it with Maggie, um, hopefully it just kind of feels a little more familiar and a little more expected. Mm -hmm. The good news is you guys don't need to know everything. If you use TSA Cares, they'll help you with the entire security process. You won't even really need to know anything. They'll, they'll walk you through every step. And I'll call them 72 hours before the At flight. least 72 hours. Yeah, so if you get your flight info from Caitlin today, then I would just call them mm -hmm. today. Okay. Yep. Gives them plenty of time to um, get that in place. And if you don't get a hold of them in time, if you forget to call them, they still are available to you. You just might have to wait a minute. Mm -hmm. So you can still roll up to security and ask for TSA Cares, a TSA Cares agent, and they'll call somebody over and bring them to you. Okay. I've done that before, and I think we waited all of 30 seconds, and somebody mm -hmm. was there and came and helped. Okay. So it's not out of the question if you forget to call. Still ask for it. You just yeah. might have to wait a little longer. Okay. Um, I think that is everything. And then the other thing is with the transfer, if you guys are going to do something, you know, like a sideboard transfer, that's a good time to be really specific about what you need. If they're going to do a two person lift and that's what you would prefer to do, they're more likely to be accustomed to that part of it but you get to advocate fully. So if it's not a problem, if there's a taller individual and a shorter individual that you ask that the taller individual is at your back so that they can lift okay. higher, there's nothing wrong with saying, can you switch spots? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's... That's just for the dependent situation. Right? Yep, exactly. 
Yeah, how hard was it? Um, we did it once, right? The airline transfer? Were you there? I mean, right she here. She did, yeah. I mean, he did the slideboard transfer once. Oh, it's just like a regular. Pretty flat. Transfer. Pretty even, right? It's flat. Um, pretty even. The only thing that makes it easy is that it's so narrow. Yeah. And it's not a like a comfy surface. Okay. Yeah. So the aisle chair itself is a bit lower than your wheelchair. It sits about here. Mm -hmm. So um, it's narrow. So on the way down, you have to make sure that you control your speed so that you land on it right. Mm. On And then on the way up, it's pretty uphill. So that's where it's a little bit harder. Going back to that chair. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I guess that's something we have to talk about. Yeah. Which we can, uh, I can go grab the aisle chair now and we could practice that transfer just to give you a reminder of what that's like so you have a better idea of what you guys want to do on Friday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. I will be right back with.